Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and dreamers of all ages, welcome to the Disney Countdown Show. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. Hello, hello, one and all, and welcome back to see episode two of season four of Disney Countdown Show. I am the dapper Danielle, and I am joined by the lovely and probably just as tired as I am, Megan the Magical Millennial, <laughs> because we're recording this episode pretty, pretty early in the morning, y'all. This is not normal for us. Yes, yes, it is. It is fairly early. We switched around our schedules a bit to accommodate um, work schedules and such. So we are up early recording this. And I honestly, I do not mind it one bit. I love getting my day started early. So anything that forces me to do that, I'm all for. And I have my coffee. I'm going to share what mugs I'm going to be using in the morning now. Right oh, now in front of me, yeah. I have this cute um, black mug that has uh, white writing on it. We got the castle. And we've got uh, Happiest Place on Earth. This is one I got from Disneyland. Oh, man. I want to say in 2017, this mug right say. here. This is an old one. Yes. But she's a goodie because she's big. So I it's, put a lot of coffee nice. in here. Thank there's you. A, there's a newer version of that mug. But it's like, it kind of, okay, it looks like a Ray Dunn knockoff, right? So it's like yes. a cream color. And it has it's cream color. Mm -hmm. into it. And mm -hmm. it has like a little bit of just the castle silhouette and some like, gardeny looking leaves and like daffodils kind yes of thing. It's that's what they swap the colors it is cute yeah it's a yeah. in the disney home store i know exactly what you're talking about mm -hmm. yes and adam we do have our uh live group our group chat here from our patreon family is listening into this as well and adam did comment that that is a giant coffee cup um, <laughs> Right? They're yeah. pretty big. And then I have my little <laughs> tumbler today with my little energy drink in it this morning, too. So we are already getting and going. Now, Ooh. for this episode, in the first episode that we did of this season, we were counting down five. And this, so this is part two of another mm -hmm. five. Yes. And for this episode, we're going to be talking about our favorite Disney movies that we would love to see as attractions. And they can't already exist as attractions unless you can give like a good enough explanation of like, for example, if Aladdin's on your list, yeah, we technically have an Aladdin attraction, but it's just a Dumbo type attraction. If you want to give something that's like totally different and totally like, on the opposite with animatronic it, yes right mm -hmm. we can we can talk about that so you just have to supply your argument for it later on in the episode got it got it got it, got it. yep it's gonna be a fun one i'm excited it will it will now y'all make sure that you are following us over on the instagram TikTok, and threads and that's gonna be disney countdown show pod disney for twitter and x and we also have our full youtube uh videos up too where you can watch the entire show or maybe you're watching us over on spotify too Hello, fam. Good Hello. To see ya. Um, and also, don't forget to follow our personal channels, where, again, I'm the Dapper Danielle. She is the Magical Millennial underscore for Miss Megan. And, yeah, I think I think that's covered all of the morning basics. So, oh, I, yeah. I, have I forgotten anything else? I'm like, oh, y'all. It's, like I said, anything can happen in the morning, right? <laughs> anything, anything before <laughs> noon for Dapper Danielle. And now that I've moved, I've realized that there's more sounds that could be affecting the podcast. So if you hear like a random, like something falling, nothing's falling. It's my ice machine. But um, <laughs> my washing is my washing machine. I am pretty sure is haunted. Like it is, it is possessed. It's got a mind of its own. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've had to call. <laughs> I've had to do recordings to be able to send to my apartment management. And I'm just like sitting here. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm in my room. And it's one of those automatic ones where you're like turning the, uh, the, the dial and does a little ding, 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 mm -hmm, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. I'm not anywhere near it. There's nothing in it. The lid's open. It should not be making any such noises. It'll start going like, bring, 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 bring. And I will start yelling at it. There are videos of me yelling at my machine. It, it will bing back at me as if it's having a conversation. Oh my God. Actually though. Um, Actually though. Might there might be someone haunting your machine. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's getting to the point where it's really freaking me out. So if you start hearing binging in the background, and if I have to get up and aggressively walk away and you hear me yelling in the background, bonus content, Chris, I'm just pre-warning you. So <laughs> That's going to be hilarious. Please don't mute yourself because we need to hear that. Oh yeah. No, you will definitely hear me. I mean, I'll keep it PG <laughs> as possible, but I will be yelling at this thing, threatening it to yeet it off my balcony and the uh, washing machine will be meeting its washboard ancestors in the afterlife. That. <laughs> Sorry. I'm threatening it from afar. It's just on the other side of my kitchen. Thank that you. Continuing on. Hilarious. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, we have a yes, we have a very fun episode for you today. Um it's uh it's gonna I think it's gonna stir up some some conversation, some debates mm. here and there for sure. And if you have something to debate us with, if you'd like to leave us a comment or review, we absolutely love that. It is a way that other people can, you know, get exposed to the show. It's a way for you to get a shout out on the show. Um, and you could also, if you want to leave a review, that is going to be on Apple. You can rate us on Spotify and DM us your reviews there if you'd like, if that's where you get your podcast. So mm -hmm. Danielle, we actually do have a few of the uh, fan messages. If, uh, okay. if you'd like me to get started, I can do that. Yes. So go ahead and get started with the first one. Perfect. This is from Lexi on Instagram and she says, Megan and Danielle, all I can say is I absolutely love this podcast. I love every rant, random Disney fact, uh, parentheses that I always care about and love to hear anyway. <laughs> I listen on my morning walks with my daughter, making me feel the Disneyland vibes of walking down Main Street. The podcast makes me feel like I'm hanging out with Disney friends I wish I had growing up. You both are truly amazing people and I look forward to every episode. Lexi, thank you. I love, oh, I love that we get to be part of your walks and make it feel like Main Street because we know that is a whole vibe right there. So that's a, a very nice compliment. Oh, yes, and tell tell your daughter we say good morning to her also. That's yes, fantastic. Good morning, Lexi's <laughs> daughter. Oh <laughs> uh, well, this next one is going to be from Kevin on Instagram. Okay. Have you heard, or I don't know if you're on that side of the algorithm, but the Kevin audio from home alone is recirculating again. And it's July. <gasps> is it the, just with a bunch of Kevin's like they're yelling, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Yes. Yeah, just I have heard alone. that. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Maybe the washing machine's name's Kevin. Like it literally Could just dinged Kevin. as I was saying it. <gasps> is that the ghost that's haunting your machine? I don't know. Oh, that's weird. Anyway, sorry. Let's get back to Kevin's message from Instagram. <laughs> and <laughs> Kevin says, gotta say that the Disney Broadway countdown is probably now my most favorite episode yet because I had, do you hear that? Oh, oh yeah, I do. I do hear that. Okay. I think its name is Kevin. It's freaking me out. Sorry. I got to refocus on this. Let me redo this again. <laughs> Kevin says on Instagram, gotta say that the Disney Broadway countdown is probably now my favorite episode yet because I had love for theater since I was a jock slash theater kid in high school and was involved with technical side of theater being grips and also a stage manager. And I have been on Broadway show Kid Kick after I saw Frozen the musical here in San Diego as my first Broadway production and just recently saw Aladdin. I can't get over how good Genie was in Aladdin. He made the whole show. Yes, he really does. Mm -hmm. uh, this countdown makes me want to see more musicals, including Disney ones, because I haven't seen Lion King yet. I, mm. I know I am way behind. Also, a couple countdown ideas, with one being movies that don't get enough love because Atlantis, Lost Empire, and Treasure Planet don't get the respect they deserve. Mm. I, we would agree with you. Facts. Or favorite Disney shorts from any Disney era with Pixar shorts included. Once again, keep up the amazing work. Kevin on Instagram. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kevin. Oh my gosh. Yes. Highly recommend seeing Lion King. I'm glad that you've seen Frozen and Aladdin. I have yet to see Aladdin on Broadway. I have not seen that show. I only saw it at DCA. I hear it's great. Um, and then... Love the ideas for the countdowns. Underrated movies would be a good list, um, as well as Disney shorts. I think we have Pixar shorts in the in the mix for a while here to try and get to um, put in our countdowns. So I, I don't know. I think that might be in season four, y'all. We'll see. Mm. But thank you for the suggestion. And right, we got one it, more for you, Danielle. 
Well, we do got one more as I'm reading this. Okay, this one, next one is from Christopher over on Instagram. It says, love your show. A few ideas for future episodes. Number one, favorite audio animatronics. Oh, mine is Max, Buff, and Melvin because the chat, I'm sorry, hold on. I'm going to have to pause. <laughs> Ever since I said the word Kevin, my washing machine has not shut up. Do you hear that? No, I, I can I can barely hear it. I if I listen really closely, I can, but it's so quiet. I'm trying to hold the mic up for you, and you shut up now. That's right. You calm down. That's what I thought. Hmm. <laughs> you got something to say? It was going crazy. It was it was continuously being there in the middle of me trying to read the last one. Danielle, I think the ghost's name is Kevin, and he wants your it attention. Hundred percent is Kevin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's letting he's you know that hitchhiking ghost. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. Violence. I'm I'm about to rage throughout. Mm. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so as Christopher was saying on Instagram, mine is Max, Buff, and Melvin because they chat with each other during the show. And we'll have to see what actually happens in the newest update. We'll we'll see. We yes. haven't seen a preview of them yet. Mm -hmm. And number two, what attractions that are now closed would you wish that you could have seen and or ride again? And then his is Adventures Through Inner Space. Ooh, keep up the wonderful show and bring back the one-star review game. Okay, Chris. <gasps> oh, Christopher Chris. on Instagram is asking for one star review to come back for another episode. Yep. And I fully agree. That was a fun game. I'm very bad at it, but it is a very fun game. And it's always fun to read the um, interesting reviews that people leave because I, I don't feel like they know the parks that well. Um, mm -hmm. So it's usually the first time visitors are the ones that rarely go. But oh, uh, love, I love keep the episode suggestions coming. Of course, we love to see what countdowns you guys would like and um, and form those, you know, just to see if we can put them in future episodes. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Christopher. This next one, and actually this last one, is from um, Mariah on Instagram. Mariah is a member of our Patreon fam. So hi, Mariah. Hello, friends. I recently found your show about a month ago, and I've been catching up on all your episodes. I'm currently on part one of Favorite Disney Myths, and I knew right out the gate the first one was the dome over the parks. I have been a follower of both of you for quite some time, and I love that y'all are on the same podcast so I can get a healthy boost of serotonin every Every day, if you're ever looking for another countdown theme, I would love to know your top 10 themed restaurants on the properties. Mm -hmm. And 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 my top tier is definitely Beaches and Cream. Danielle, mm -hmm. where is Beaches and Cream located? I haven't taken you to Beaches and Cream yet. No, I haven't been. It, it sounds like Boardwalk, but I know that's not right. Oh, it, okay. You're correct. It's within the Boardwalk area. It's actually oh. over at Yacht and Beach Club. <laughs> Over oh, great. Okay. Club side. It is yeah. a small, like ice cream parlor esque. It has a little jukebox and everything. And they are known for the kitchen sink. Which <gasps> that, is, okay. And I've seen that on the socials for sure. Yeah. Right. And then you hear everybody yell, uh, and a whole can of whipped cream, a whole <laughs> can. Like that's what you're supposed to respond as. And that is, they, oh. y'all, they got some really good, like, uh, little melts over there and they're one of the few places that you can still get steak fries and they're actually really good too. Oh, mm, I that will take sounds... you to beaches and cream next time you're here, Megan. I think that we will add that to the list. Let's add it because I would love to go. I'm a big ice cream person anyway, and I would love to see that, um, that unfolding if it's, you know, <laughs> if it's a thing. <laughs> Oh no, it, it's uh, good. It's really, really good. I don't think we'll have, we won't partake in the, uh, the kitchen sink. Cause it's a little, it's a little much. It is a little much. I was but, gonna say, how many friends do you need to finish a kitchen sink? I mean, I, if you don't want to feel like you're dying afterwards, I say at least five. At least five. That's that. That five sounds about right. Like okay. A good number. So you feel like you actually finished it and then you spend all the money for it. However, there is a Sunday that mom can eat by herself and it is called the no way Jose. And Ooh, it, okay. caramel and peanuts and like all the fabulous goodness. It's, it's so good. So good. That sounds amazing. Yes. Uh, we are doing that next time I'm there, which, um, okay. maybe in the next couple of weeks, <laughs> I still book my flight, but I'm on it. I'm on it guys. I'm going over there. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> but like, like I said, you just let me know. I'm the one over here. I'm flexible. I'll just come get you. It's fine. <laughs> we'll go. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you to Mariah for that lovely review. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for being a Patreon. Guys, we do have the Disney Countdown Show Patreon page and a new member just joined us in the last week. And that's Matthew. Welcome Matthew. to the fam, Matthew. Really appreciate you being here. And guys, we post all the fun bonus content over on the Patreon. Of course, if you're a paid subscriber, you get access to that content too. And it's just, we just have a lot of fun over there. You get the bonus episodes, you get the virtual hangs every month. You can join our live recordings if you'd like. That's part of a couple of our tiers on the Patreon. And um, we actually do have an update in the last, uh, I think it's, this is uh, brand new. Uh, there's a special offer where you get 10% off your membership if you pay for the entire year up front. So that's kind of neat. You get discounts Ooh. for the, uh, think... the upfront membership. That must be a Patreon specific website thing. It is. They just started it. Cause I actually do. I have a, a personal one myself. So I just uh, saw that starting in the last week. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's kind of a cool deal. We have over 250 members of our magical family. So thank you everyone so much for being here again. We just, we love it. We love talking with you all every month. Um, and then we just had one a couple weeks ago uh, that was during our break. And uh, it was, it's always just so much fun. We, we play some games. We get to catch up with you. You get to ask us real time questions. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. We have we have quarterly giveaways, all that good stuff. So if you want, if you're interested in joining the Patreon fam, you can of course become a paid subscriber. We do also have the Patreon link in our episode notes, and yeah, that's it's just a good time. <laughs> it's a good time. I mean, yeah. just the Discord alone. It's I think there's gonna and be the Discord. A whole section. Yes, we're gonna have to. Okay, I need somebody in the Discord family to do a a washing machine ghost host like kind of emoji something and put that in the discord chat y'all that's your home oh my this gosh week. yes because it started <laughs> binging again i think it's kevin <laughs> so weird i think it's name is kevin <laughs> like legit danielle i think we've discovered something as we're recording this that your your ghost name is kevin yeah i think so it's so weird <laughs> It's so weird. And Brianna, even in the chat, was just like, have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? I don't know. I've, I've tried multiple things. I've threatened it. I've, I've, I have unplugged it once, plugged it back in. It came back in a full fury of going, bring, 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 and I was just like, mm. it was too weird. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know. She Anyway. He, excuse me, is is um, being a little temperamental and just wanting attention at the best time right now. Just the most convenient time. <laughs> right? And I'm just like, you, I, you can't make Kevin angry because I'm like, okay, are you going to like stain my white load or like what's going to happen? You never know. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. Get full revenge on your clothes. I don't know. Right? <laughs> oh, gosh. It's a delicate balance right here. Anyway, Megan, what's been going yeah. on in the park here recently? Oh man, what's been going on? Well, Danielle, over on the West Coast, we are going under some construction with a capital C. Wait, um, more? Well, they closed off all of Critter Country. You cannot even access the land at all or the entrance to Rise of the Resistance and Galaxy's Edge over by Hungry Bear Restaurant. Hungry Bear is closed. Um, basically, when you walk up to Harbor Galley, uh, the wall is sitting right there as well. So, Isn't that I'll half of your... Or does it stop right before the view of Fantasmic? Or does that take up your view of Fantasmic? It does not. So you, we still have Harbor Galley, which is the end of the viewing of Fantasmic. That is still open. Okay. But in, but you cannot go past, like, the tree that's to the left of it. Like, the wall just, it, it hits Harbor Galley's back wall. Um, so that happened. That was, uh, Sunday was the day, the night after the park closed was the day that they closed it off. And uh, so the canoes are uh, canoes are obviously not uh, happening, and um, Hungry Bear Restaurant is not available. So that okay. uh, yeah, that explains a lot because I saw the canoeer cast member side of TikTok, yeah, and they were like posting montage videos, and I'm like, wait, I have not heard of them closing, and I had not tried the canoes yet, and I was about to do a full on rage. Also, if I wasn't taking it on my washing machine, it was going to be on the canoes, and. Um, oh, you would okay. have seen something from me for sure. But um, right. no, that okay, it's, so it it's only temporary. 
It is coming back. It's it's just it'll be probably a few months, I think. I think September is when they were thinking of opening up. I am honestly, I'm not too sure. Um, but uh, the because th they're building the store right after the Haunted Mansion exit. And oh. they also have a lot of a work to do on Tiana's still. So they had to close it off completely because, yes, I do believe um, it has to they have to make room for the store that they're building. So they needed space to do that interesting and then mm -hmm. i'm sure hungry bear closing i think is a little more surprising because we were gonna we were even saying we're like oh no hungry bear is not gonna close it's not gonna be affected but it looks like it actually is it is and is the whole surprising. entrance to galaxy's edge we lost an entrance so yeah yeah that's the that's a bummer so basically our park does dead end at a, at a certain point which is it's interesting yeah throws off um, the vibes throws yeah off the vibes it does. Back to the old ways before Galaxy's Edge, where you can't make a full circle. <laughs> you have to just walk right. back. Yeah. So do the, do the do the little loop back that way. Do the yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but in other news, uh, what else? Oh, I did. I was uh, able to go catch the fireworks for the first time. I hadn't seen the fireworks in Batu, um, uh, Fire the Rising Moon, in oh, yes. a fr from the like the main spot, right? So right next to the Falcon. I was finally able to catch the fireworks from there. And man, oh man, are those some of the best fireworks ever? Like they did such a good job matching up the music to the um, what is Together Forever, which is the Pixar uh, fireworks, right? Because that's happening on everywhere else in the park. But in Galaxy's Edge, it's Star Wars music from the movies. And oh my gosh, I mean, they have like Duel of the Fates. Like uh, they have Padme and Anakin's um, song. It is... It is really cool. And the fireworks are legitimately because you are next to Toontown in that area. It's like right on the other side. They are loud. And I forgot how loud they were. <laughs> like they're right above you. So um, like, it sounds like the Death Star is blowing up right in front of me. This is amazing. It really does. They're like <laughs> giant fireworks right there. So I highly recommend catching that because I don't know how long it's going to stick around. I mean, they built a whole sound system for it. So it should be here for at least a little that longer. Was my but next question, yeah. as we get mm -hmm. in towards like the Halloween season, and you guys actually yeah. have Halloween inspired fireworks, does that mean that the show is going to be altered? Is it the same soundtrack, and then it's not going to match up as perfectly, or we I just know. don't know yet? There's no update on that. Um, sadly, I I would love to see maybe them just like switching around the songs a little bit because yeah, the fireworks are going to be different. But in terms of this one, it is either going to go away or it's going to change because Pixar Fest is ending in less than a month. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're coming to Disneyland anytime soon, go to Batu, try to see the fireworks from there, and then hopefully you're there for another night and can see it with the Pixar songs. Very yeah, good. it's because it's really cool. Mm -hmm. But Danielle, there's some stuff going on over there as well on the East Coast. <sighs> Y'all, with your, with your I have been getting so <laughs> many messages and it's only been like 24 hours at the time that we're recording this episode. And by the time this episode releases, hold on, let me double check my calendar and let me see what's going to be happening or when this episode's going to release. Okay. When this episode releases, which is going to be on the 15th, uh, Country Bears is officially going to open in two days after that. So this we're currently yes. recording this on the 9th right after they just announced and gave us a little bit of a preview of the country bear jamboree outfit rethemes and remodel of most of the characters like a good amount of the characters mm -hmm. and some people are like really like confused and questioning it it actually makes total sense to me and i'm actually kind of loving it so to people asking danielle what are you thinking danielle what is what is your thoughts i love it i'm <laughs> I'm obsessed Yay. with how campy it is. And uh, first off, Ernest, who originally sings, um, if you can't bite, don't growl, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We didn't really know what he was going to be wearing. We kind of only saw him from the neck up and he was just wearing a little like straw hat kind of thing. But now in his preview photos, he's actually Disney bounding as Bert. He has oh. the yellow, orange, and white vest. He has the blue bow tie. His hat matches Bert's now. And if you look at his fiddle, the fiddle has been completely repainted and redesigned. And it's like a black fiddle now. And it has little uh, Mother of Pearl all around it. And it's to represent the Pearl band 
from supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. So I think that's what Ernest is going to be playing in the show. And that makes me kind of excited because, I don't know, just picture, I mean, most most European anything, like that's also another side of TikTok I've gone on to, is the Shakespeare mm -hmm. side of TikTok, but performing it with a Southern accent. Have you seen that? Yes. Yeah, I have. And it makes me understand Shakespeare so much better. And, <laughs> and so to hear supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, if that is the song that we were getting, sung in a country accent, I'm going to be obsessed. I'm going to love it so much is what I'm saying. It, absolutely. I, uh, that would be amazing. I cannot wait to see it. Um, I, I should be there the time that it's open and... Um, yeah, hopefully go see all that. That's so cool. I'm so glad you like it. Uh, I, of course I'm all about it because I am not, I'm not obviously the diehard country bear jamboree fan, but I'm all for it. I'm all for the changes and they do look great. So I, I'm just really looking forward to it. Y'all, I gotta, I gotta tell y'all my idea that I'm really thinking about, I'm really trying to decide on is that if you, that's also another side of the social media is uh chapel Roan, right? <laughs> And her song, mm -hmm. Pink Pony Club, is all I can think about when I see the design for Trixie and Bunny Bubbles and Beulah. And I am so tempted to get a full-on pink glittery cowgirl outfit and do a whole TikTok audio just to Pink Pony Club and then clipping to them back and forth. I, I love that. I love it. Yes. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, my gosh. The chat's Please. Like, yes. Do it. Yeah. Please do. Required. <laughs> We're hyping you up. Yep. <laughs> I guess I might be making some Amazon purchases and I guess I need to go get the bedazzler out and start blinging up some cowgirl stuff. It's going to be amazing. Yes. Woo. Oh, I cannot wait, Danielle. Oh my gosh. Aww. It's going to be a treat. I'm excited. Like again, I'm excited. Um, I, I love the outfits. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of questioning a little bit of Trixie and, uh, uh, swing in Teddy Barra's outfit a little bit. Like I want Teddy Barra's a little more over the top glam, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Trixie went full on silver glitter and hard on the contour and lipstick, which I'm not angry about. I'm kind of, kind of giving a vibe, <laughs> but it's, it's good. It's taken it back. And somebody said, okay, they're just increasing the saturation. Like everything is really bright colors. It's very mm -hmm. vivid now. It's not as muted as it was. So we'll, we'll have to see. We'll see what happens. Like, it's new, so we're going to make it look new. Here's right. brightness. Yeah. Okay. Oh, very, very bright. Very mm -hmm, bright. Mm -hmm. And speaking of new, um, Megan, yeah. did you see the D23 uh, ultimate fan giveaway that's happening right now, the sweepstakes? Did I ever? I had to do the little cartoon thing where I like rub my eyes and be like, what? Are they actually doing this? <laughs> this is nuts. It's like a whole series of sweepstakes that they're doing. I mean, okay, granted, if y'all have been a part of D23 for some time or you know D23, they have sweepstakes every now and then that are very good. They do giveaways quite frequently, but nothing like this. I, like we're mm -hmm. talking maiden voyage trip on the Disney treasure. We're talking um, a 21 Royal dining experience at Disneyland. Do you have any idea how special that is? I something that's my dream. That is my dream to go and do that. And if you could do that for free, oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. I'm talking VIP trip to the ESPYs. Uh, and of course you got this like Oogie Boogie tickets, um, portrait drawn by a Pixar artist. You can go visit the Walt Disney animation studios and Aulani trip. This is insane. I keep scrolling down and I'm like, it's not ending. <laughs> okay. So, but we can all agree that nobody else but me is allowed to apply to the Walt Disney Archives tour. Okay. So keep that open nope. for the Dapper Danielle and all right. of her nope. entries, Everybody, please. Everybody, stop. Stop applying to that one. You guys can win all the other ones. But Danielle needs to win the Archives tour. It's all I'm saying. So stop. Stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and to dine with the Disney legend. I mean, it's just... I, oh, look, there's a fairy tale weddings and honeymoons. No one apply to that one either. Um, cause that'll be for my second moon. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. There, there is some really good stuff. Now y'all do have to be at least the basic free version of D 23 for the mm -hmm. account members. And that's how you apply. And yep. it's free to enter. 
you don't have to pay anything additional into it unless you are paying for D23. Um, mm-hmm. But that does not give you any extra bonus of like, hey, you're you're guaranteed to win something because you're paying. That's not how it works. No. So it's very, very cool, though. The whole, really cool. the whole concept. So definitely go look into that. It's D23 fantastic prizes. Um, and it's going to be ending. When does this uh, sweepstakes end? Oh, good question. Uh, fine print, fine print. This one ends. It's between um, August so was, 11th. Yeah, August 11th. So July 8th and August 11th. And of course, mm-hmm. this is leading up to uh, D- the D23 Expo, which is in one month, everyone. We are one month away from D23. And they want to get that membership number up <laughs> before that expo. Yeah, Let's do. go. <laughs> I've been I've been a D23 gold member now for da, 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 seven years, six or seven wow. years. Yeah. Fun times. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, yeah. Page. There we go. Anyway, good luck but... to everyone. And also Megan, the magical millennial uh, in these sweepstakes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and to Danielle for the archives. And to Danielle so for the archives. Every, so just the archives <laughs> one and just the Disney fairy tale weddings one. All of y'all. y'all or 21 Royal. The rest or 21 Royal. 21 or 21 Royal. Royal. And if you Let's... win 21 Royal, then you're inviting Megan and I. Ab- absolutely. I will, yes. I will make a special flight out to California if one of y'all get 21 Royal. And we have to go. Like, that's yes, all we, we have to go. <laughs> You'll be one of your 12 people. They accept 12 people. So volunteers tribute. Mm hmm. It'll be a parquet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I think we do, before we get into our game and everything else, we do have some breaking Disney news. We interrupt our program to bring you this Disney news. Okay, I got to talk about this first one, y'all. Yeah. Oh, that's so, this is all you, babe. Mm-hmm. Th- this one is all me. So I mm-hmm. have talked about previously the uh, the hoop de doo just celebrated its 50th anniversary, which is a really big deal. Um, hoop de doo has like become and is one of the longest running shows in American history now. And has done the most shows, performing for millions of people. And here recently, the Hoop De Doo original cast from 1974 got together and did a whole like reunion and got to go on stage. And I don't think they didn't perform or anything like that, but they did get a table. And so it was six of the original show members, I believe. And they got a really cute picture with the current show team. And it was, it was a good time. Oh, actually, I know two of the people in the current show. As I'm looking at, sorry, okay. I got distracted. I'm looking at the photo. I'm like, oh, I know him. I know him. Oh, so cute. But uh, <laughs> yes, good, good times. They usually, um, the old gang will usually get back together on certain key milestones and they did mm-hmm. get together for the 50th anniversary. I did get that comment in my video that I did talking about it and it was, it was good. It was good. That's awesome. I, so Danielle, speaking of, uh, we were talking about earlier, the list that we got to hit while I'm over there, uh, hoop to do review is one because I haven't done it yet. So, um, we, <sighs> we got to go do that. So good. See, that's I've only I heard good things. Is, is Danny coming? Is Eric coming? Because then that way I can go ahead and reserve us a table. Because the, the hoop de doo tickets, they sell out pretty fast. So we'll, we'll have to talk about that off, off air. And we'll, we'll finalize Hoop-de-doo. that. It'll be great. Okay. So fun fact, the song that I you will hear me hum every once in a while is hoop de doo hoop de doo da 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 It's the original song from the show. But... Um, Wait, actually? Right. I just so, hummed a tune that I have never heard in my life, and it's actually the tune. Well, the reasoning is, is because that the, they were hit with a plagiarism, um, lawsuit in Uh, 2005. Oh, so it was the original song from like the seventies up until the two thousands. And then somebody came out and said, Oh wait, that's actually my song. And the other team won or Disney didn't want to have to deal with the legal stuff. So the hoop to do theme song got re redone. And this was years ago, though. And so I still sing the original from when I was growing up. And uh, yes, but it. it's just random, random thing in the middle of the podcast that you probably don't care about. But I'm going to tell you anyway. All because I just sung what you said. <laughs> yes, I will. I will have to find the specific details. But yes, there was a there was a lawsuit. It was a thing. <laughs> oh, wow. OK, OK. Yeah. Fun facts. 
Huh. Anyway, yes, yes we got to go see that. I um, will get you my dates and we'll get that reserved. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. And our next, uh, our next headline here is, this is actually, I'm really excited for this. Um, Devil Wears Prada, one of the best movies of all time, is getting a sequel, everyone. There is reportedly, actually, is it confirmed? I, I was just reading the article. Um, well, this one's, this is put out by it's in the works, And it's, it, okay, it says it's in the works, everybody, with okay. screenwriter, who was from the first film, um, uh, a a lean. Oh gosh, I it's A L I N E. I feel really bad for not knowing how to pronounce that. A line, Brosh McKenna. Um and uh, yeah, and it's reportedly going to follow Miranda Priestly after it's in the current times where obviously magazines and print media are taking a bit of a hit and navigating those um those waters and she goes she's going up against emily blunt's character who is now an executive for a uh luxury group so that's kind of cool it does say in here that we do not know who from the original cast will be returning mm -hmm. they have not announced any of that we don't know if the queen meryl streep herself will be returning or not i assume that she will um i would hope so she's just with, amazing Right. Without her, is it really the Devil Wears Prada without Meryl Streep? I don't know who could fill those shoes. I really don't. Those very expensive no. shoes. No, I, yeah. The, the, the fashion icons in all of New York will be raging in the street if she does not return for this movie. Or they'll just cut it if she doesn't get caught, if she's not back in the movie. That's what I I'm think saying. so, too. She is Miranda Priestly, so I agree. And along those lines, I don't think we announced last week, but Freaky Friday is getting a sequel, which I'm actually really, really looking forward to because I am such yes. a Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan fan. I am so happy. Like Lindsay Lohan, first of all, looks amazing. She, I mean, she she's does. like literally glowing. I know she's a mom and um, I'm just, I'm just so happy for her and her career right now. And the fact that Freaky Friday 2 is, is coming is like, it just gives me so much joy because I loved that movie growing up. She, she did a little throwback video talking about here i think it was on one of the socials i don't know who it was mm -hmm. maybe it was through people on mm -hmm. um on tiktok and she was talking about how it's very nostalgia coming back to the disney studio and recording again and how she's actually excited about it and Yay. i was like okay wasn't really expecting that answer but happy for you like that's good yeah. that's awesome yeah yeah i i'm really happy for her too i know that she's i mean she had obviously a long-standing history with disney and um I'm happy that she's she's coming back and is looking forward to it. So that's all good stuff. Makes me very happy. Well, another character that's also coming back, but in the Marvel universe, is going to be Agatha. Oh. They just dropped this teaser trailer. What yesterday? This was yesterday. Yes. So about over a week ago now that this uh, episode's airing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's going to be called Agatha All Along, and mm -hmm. it is the infamous Agatha Harkness character. She's going to be coming back. Um, now, I'm, I'm confused on where this is taking place in, like, the whole Marvel Universe. This is um, the, I don't know how long, but it is the events, obviously, after um, WandaVision. Okay. And Agatha, it's what, so what it seems to be like is that she has... Um, She's still in her character or under the spell that Wanda, like, you know, set on her. Um, she doesn't know who she is, basically. She's she's basically playing this role that Wanda told her to play. Um, and she's being reminded, from what it looks like, um, from Miss Aubrey Plaza, who is also, I believe, a witch, um, that she needs to come back and realize who she is. And it seems like there's a lot of horror elements that are, in like intertwined in this series which i'm really looking forward to and uh all the all the cast is amazing um i just oh it's so exciting i'm a big katherine hahn fan i actually said hello to her in the maui airport one year and she was really nice um so i i cannot wait for this show it looks so so good and also the marketing for this show i don't know if anyone was paying attention to marvel studios instagram or i think it's either marvel or marvel studios but they were releasing these like weird random posters with different titles for this series. One was like, not Heart of Darkness, but it was something like that, something of darkness. And we were like, wait a minute, that is that the title of this? Like, I don't understand. And it was a couple things where um, it was, but then they would delete it. Like it, it would go up 
and it would be there for like a couple, like maybe minutes or maybe an hour. And then, and then it would disappear. Mm -hmm. They did that about, I I want to say a month ago. Okay. And that's, and that's like a straw hat goofy put out a video about it. And he's like, what is like, what is happening with Marvel studios right now? Um, and it was a marketing tactic for Agatha all along. Um, because it was leading up to, I think it was the teaser or something like that, or like the actual poster that was released. So I just, I I thought it was genius. Um, and uh, yeah, a a lot of people missed it because they would take the, they would take these, um, random like titles down and it was all in like purple. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So. I did not realize that. I'm so glad you've been like on top of the Marvel side <laughs> of stuff, Megan, because I totally have not been. But no, I, okay. Yeah. For those that are wondering, this will be premiering on September 18th. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first two episodes exclusively on Disney Plus. And this is perfect timing for spooky season. Like, Halloween season? Oh, it's like right there. Yeah. I ideal. think it's ideal. Yes. It's a little late in my opinion, but it's fine. <laughs> Maybe like a week earlier um, I mean, or two weeks earlier. I mean, it's okay. This way, it's that fine. way, it's like in full on. Nobody will be complaining about like it's too early. I mean, some people will complain that it's a little too late, but other people will be like, "No, this is perfect. I will start off my spooky season September eighteenth, and then go through October, and then finish watching this." Because we, uh, how many? We don't know how many episodes this will be, so this will probably end around Halloween. True, and you're absolutely right. It, it should be maybe like a, a six to eight episode series. Yeah, so. Mm. nailed that Disney marketing mm-hmm. team I see, we see what you're doing smart 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 they're smart. they're always one step ahead we just be like we just catch up and we're like oh now i get it i see what you're doing yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you know sometimes but did you see my video about the um the 2025 calendar here for walt disney world i didn't yet didn't see that one I just posted it and it's the first thing I do a little shopping and they wrote like one of the first 2025 calendars has hit the shelves as of July. Shocking. Mm-hmm. But the month of January, the photo is test track. Test track is closed. It's not going to yeah. look like that when it reopens in 2025. No. Oh, and dinosaur is like the month of November and it could close in the middle of next year. Oh, and wow. I was just like, is it really this long? is such bad timing to put in two attractions that could possibly be extinct in 2025 or it'll make the calendar even more valuable. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Just the whole thing is very amusing. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll go back and watch that video just because like, I obviously will be coming over to Disney World next year. I still got the pass. Um, yeah. So uh, dinosaur closing makes me sad. Like, It's not my favorite ride, but it closing just makes me sad. We, it's been around for so we long. We don't know anything, right? Right. So we're hoping to get a timeline sometime during D23, but we don't oh, know yeah. anything just yet. This mm-hmm. is all just speculation. We know what's coming down the road, but they're having a hard enough time with running into technical issues with Test Track, with it mm-hmm. already being closed. It, it might push back any work being done to Animal Kingdom. We'll just have to see. Got it. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Well, um, oh, well, we got one, uh, speaking of, uh, closing <laughs> for refurb, um, oh, it's, is Peter Pan over there closed at, uh, at Magic Kingdom? Huh. I didn't know it was closed. Oh, fun facts. Okay. I guess, I guess Walt Disney World put out a statement saying that beginning July 8th, which was yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Uh, Peter Pan's <laughs> flight will temporarily close for refurbishment. The attraction is scheduled to reopen later this summer. <gasps> so oh, could be a long time. Supposedly August, like end of August. Wow. Okay. So little of an extensive refurb. Hmm. Did she need it? I mean, when does she not? But at the same True. time, like, I don't, I don't know. That's kind of surprising, especially like you're talking peak summer. That was one of the best lines to have people in because it was the darkest. It had the most coverage. You could fit mm-hmm. a lot of people in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now for that to be closed, I can imagine the amount of mental breakdowns that will be happening in the middle of Fantasyland here at Walt Disney World this summer. The place not that's to a, be, y'all. That's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's a popular ride. Yeah, especially for the kiddos. Oh, okay. Well, mm interesting timing there um yeah yeah we'll keep you posted on on peter pan at magic kingdom 
Yeah. I got to go investigate this myself. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that about does it for our Disney news for this episode. Uh, Danielle, would you like to play a game? I think we should play a game. We got Chris back in the house for another game for us. Chris, are you there? I am here. I'm back. Let's play hey, some games. Woo! Chris is back. I missed y'all so much. You can't even believe it. I miss you too. I miss you. We miss you too. Yeah. We were like, where's Chris? I wish Chris? I could be recording in my kitchen too, but I don't have anywhere to sit in my kitchen because it's tiny. I know this is my recording space for right oh, now. Man, my office my is door. almost done. Hi. Who is it? What's is that up? Kevin? Kevin. Materialized. Kevin, the okay. washing machine, came to, came came to life. A little tour for, for someone. She knows this person. This person is in her house. I hope she knows this person. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Danielle, there's a man in your house. <laughs> Hello. Is that person trying to sell you magazines? Because you don't have to let them in. <laughs> oh. oh, there's another person. <laughs> is she recording in like a model house? Hold on one second, guys. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> Oh, 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 she doesn't realize she's on camera. Oh no! <laughs> Bonus card. Ooh. What is that? Who is that? <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? <laughs> There's three people, three separate people. Oh, good. Let's see if we can add some more noises to her apartment. <laughs> she's got a lightsaber on him or something. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. There you are. Hey. Hold on. Okay. All right. You have to explain before we go any further what just happened. I completely forgot that was happening today. <laughs> Is it it's just a walkthrough of your place? It's, yeah, it's a uh, occupancy inspection. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I forgot it was on my calendar and... I didn't know that many people were going to show up. I thought it was just going to be one and <laughs> didn't know they were going to set off all my alarms either. So, so sorry for picking that up on the, uh, on the That's stuff. All right. That's okay. We were enjoyed they just checking the... to make sure that you occupied your apartment or that there weren't more people in there. I think it was to make sure that I didn't have more than like five people living in a one bedroom apartment kind of thing. Oh man. If we would have known, yeah. we could have stuffed as many people in there as possible. Well, the fact that I had the podcast going is even funnier yeah. because then they're, only they're here like, virtually. right. So I'm like, <laughs> by the way, I have a podcast going, so you might see them up on the screen and they're just like, what? Oh my goodness. We're so sorry, but tell them we say hello. So my apartment complex people say hello, podcast family. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Continue, okay. Mr. Chris. We'll try <clears throat> this again. <laughs> and yes, Brianna, I did tell him about Kevin. <laughs> They didn't seem like they cared at all. Like, no, they just said, put another work order request in. I was like, dag nab it, but you're not going to believe me that there's a ghost haunting my washing machine. I, there's not a way for me to put a comment in there saying that he responds to the name of Kevin. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> We've got a lot of fun games planned for this season, but I think we should start off with an oldie and a goodie. O oldie but a goodie or oldie and a goodie? I think they're both. <gasps> but to me, it's oldie but a goodie. Oldie mm -hmm. buddy. I think it's Oldie Butt, but I think in this case it's Oldie and a Goodie. We're playing yeah. Yensid, which is the backward song game. Mm. The way it works Ooh. is I will play a song in reverse. You'll have to tell me what the song is, but you have to put the words of the title of the song in the reverse order. If you don't know how to play it, you'll get it after the first one. The ladies are pros at this point. No, I'm Danielle, not. if you need to get some pencils and papers Hold available. On, I need to get that's what I'm doing. Go. I gotta get my pencil and paper out so that we can write it out because the dyslexia it works very, very strong first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so do we do it like one at a time? Is that how it usually goes, right? I think so, right? My pen's not we, working. Well, uh, do we do. We have. Do I think we've done in the past. We might have done both where you like raise your hand or you shout it out. Right. Yeah. Let's raise our hand. That sounds fun. Okay. okay. Or, and, right. and then also, while you raise your hand, make some audible noise so people listening on their buzz, jobs buzz. or wherever they might be, yeah, yeah. can know ding, ding, who's ding. who. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the first one. Buzz, buzz. 
Buzz, buzz. Yep. Um, wait, wait. See the under. See the under is incorrect. What? You're on the right track, though. Let's play a little bit more or play it over again. Buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz. What do you think? Girl, the kiss. Girl, the kiss is correct. Nice, Danielle. Very nice. I can remember that crustaceans Jamaican accent from anywhere, even if it is backwards. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Here we go. Next one. Buzz. Buzz. Buzz, buzz. What do you buzz, think? Buzz, buzz. Um. <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> Come will Prince my Sunday. Come will Prince my Sunday, I believe is correct. <laughs> it sounded pretty good. Day, my will Sunday. And Adriana Casalotti's voice is um, very distinct. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta love Snow's voice. Do you think that she would be like a popular singer in current times? Yeah, with a, with... I she has such There's a unique, unique voice. Performers out there now, I guess she probably would. You just need to put like a ravey like sound audio underneath it, and it would be popping at the clubs. That's all I'm yeah. saying. It'll it'll be a thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody work oh. on that edit for us, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We need, we need a remix. Here we go. Here's the next one. Buzz. Oh, welcome your. Yeah. Welcome your is correct. Oh, got it at the end there. Who is excited to see the rock? As Maui. Oh yeah. I can't. I don't. That's gonna be wild. I'm just excited for Moana too. Do you think he's gonna have hair like he did in the Scorpion King? Like it's just like like a sort of black <laughs> wig. He's going to look ridiculous, I, I think. I don't know. Maybe he'll look I mean, cool. I don't know. I think they'll we'll have Maui without hair. That would be kind I of I would prefer that. I would prefer it, honestly. He looks he looks great the way he does. But right. We'll see what happens. Anyway, here we go. Next one. Oh, oh. <laughs> my mouse wouldn't go to this thing what is it what do you think who who are you saying who got that one um let's who said if, let's try danielle Dan, what, danielle what do you think okay it's love in i'm say won't i that's correct love and say i won't i is correct well done. I'm glad you're writing these down because I'm. I have. This is the only way I can play this game is I have to write oh, it yeah. down and say it backwards. <laughs> yeah. Last one. We blew through this whole game. This was a fun one. Always fun. Here we go. Here's the next and last one. Buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz. What do you think? Hang on. Um. Begin life. My will win. Begin life. My will win is correct. And that was it. That was a little bit of a game. I'm glad we played. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank Always you. Happy love to be back. Like I yes. said, lots of fun games planned soon, so please stick around. Keep listening. I'm sure you're listening. If you're listening to this right now, you're listening to every other episode. I'm positive. <laughs> Oh man, always fun. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Thank Chris. you for Jensen. Well, that was super fun as per usual. Thank you to our producer, Chris. Uh, I love Jensen. That's a good one. And uh, obviously can't wait for, for more games in the next coming episodes. But I think it's time, Danielle, to get to our countdown for yes. this particular episode. And it's uh, Disney movies that should or we think should be rides. And, um, of course, can make the argument, if it already is a ride, uh, how you can make it better or different. Um, 
I I do not have that problem because none of my movies are currently rides at all. So oh, good. It's going to be great. I'm excited for this one. And like um, you said in the beginning of the episode, this is definitely like a, a good topic of conversation. And I'll be interested to see what the Discord says later after this episode airs. Mm -hmm. Because everybody else is going to have their own opinions, their own, what we're calling blue sky concepts. That's what Disney Imagineering calls it um, for mm -hmm. things that are like, if anything was possible, what would you make into an attraction? What would you make into a ride or a walk around or whatever? Yeah. Um, so Megan, since you 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 said none of these are current attractions, I say you no. go first. Okay, okay, can okay. do. Um, do we want to recap our last episode, or is that not even like a thing? We just go straight into the this one, our top five. I'm just gonna go straight into it. I I think I'll go, just straight go straight into this one because yeah, then it's, a you don't it's a different list. People. True, true, true. Yes, no, you're right. right. Okay, so my first movie that I think should be a ride. Uh, is Mulan. Where the heck are the Mulan attractions? First of all, um, that is one of the best Disney movies of all time. Okay. That was top five on my list. And um, I just think there's so much opportunity there to do something like with Mushu, with, um, I don't know, like the whole storyline. I just feel like there's something there and it could just be like a Nice and slow attraction, similar to, um, I don't know, Peter Pan or Snow White or uh, something like that. I just want to see something Mulan because mm. it's just one of my favorites. So that is my number five. You know, okay, that I did think about that also. And did you know that originally when Epcot was supposed to open, there was a slot in the China Pavilion for a dragon themed roller coaster. Like a, a roller, I think, yes, a roller coaster. And no, I did not know that, but oh, uh, that's so frustrating that it didn't come so to fruition. Wouldn't that be so cool if they yes. did a Mushu themed roller coaster and they set it to the fight music from Mulan? Oh my gosh, yes. And then you have all the soundtrack playing in the queue. Yes, of course. I would go to the China Pavilion. I love the China Pavilion. She's beautiful. But to be honest, I don't spend a lot of time there. But I would be there a lot more if that were there. So, um, right? yeah. I Hello, China Pavilion. Thank you. Hey, let's get some more attractions inside Epcot, man. We got the, we got the space to build it. Let's make it happen. Fully agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, thank you. Dragon Roller Coaster. Please make it happen, oh, Disney. That's a good idea, Megan. Good idea. I'm shocked Thanks. I didn't write that one down. But along the same lines, I was thinking in a different direction with my Disney princesses. So my number five is Cinderella. Okay. Yes, I was thinking her too. What would you yeah. like to see with Cinderella? Okay. I was thinking like kind of like how we have the Beauty of the Beast attraction over in Tokyo with an yes. amazing animatronic of the beast transforming. I would like to see <gasps> that same technology with Cinderella's transformation dress. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh, that would be incredible. And I know they can do it. I know it's possible. Right? If and they can make a beast transform into a human. Right? <laughs> so then if, if like, kind of like how they have the, like the dancing teacups, instead yours would be like a little pumpkin carriage like a, like a yes. pumpkin and you would be bouncing around just going through Cinderella's story. Like if you went into her house and then you see the stepsisters, you mm -hmm. like, Oh, it'd be such a cool experience. So yeah, I'm picturing it along the lines of the ride over in Tokyo for beauty and the beast, but Agreed. Cinderella. Yes. Yes. I think that's such a good idea. Good one, Danielle. And yes, I you could do that tenfold, the transformation scene with all of the characters, like the mice, uh, you got the, the, um, Oh my gosh. The ho the horses. The pumpkin carriage. The pumpkin carriage. Like you could totally do that just with multiple things. <laughs> Something well, like that. And then that. you could actually do two parts of it. So you go in the beginning transformation yeah. scene with just fairy godmother and Cinderella. And uh -huh. then you do, you go into the ballroom scene, see them dancing and then her transform Clock strikes again midnight. Yep. into rags. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, that would be so good. Man. That okay. Pretty cool. And just Cinderella is such a classic, you know, she, she's got a castle. It's great and everything. I think she has multiple castles, but, mm -hmm. uh, and, and a restaurant, but oh man, yes, I think she deserves an attraction too, like an actual ride. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love it's a great choice. Great choice. All right. Well, um, 
off of the princesses for just a moment, um, my number four is going to be Coco. I know it's Pixar, but um, I just think seeing like the ofrendas and the um, the the pathway to the um, I guess land of the dead. Mm -hmm. And like having kind of that like journey through from land, from like normal life to the land of the dead, uh, over the bridge with those beautiful flowers. Um, it could be like, you could be riding on the back of an alebrije, like the, you know, the one with wings. Mm -hmm. I just think it'd be cool and really pretty and very colorful. And, um, you know, hearing all the, the music that we love so much from the film in there. So, um, and yeah. I just, I feel like, yeah would we would we make it a dark ride or w are you thinking like if we were riding on the back of a alabrije right mm -hmm. could it be something like avatar flight of passage and i was kind of thinking along those lines yes it could be that agree yes it could be that you could it could be a screen ride which I, I know we have a lot of those but i just think it would be really pretty similar to avatar and very colorful and bright and um i i just think it would be really cool cuz the whole like uh, world in that movie um, with like the land of the dead is like, it's really cool. You know, like there's a lot yeah. of cool like structures and scenes. And um, so I, I don't know. I feel like it could just be a whole same as flight of passage, like a four, four, four to five minute attraction or where you go through that land. You could even take soaring. Soaring too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Soaring might be a little more like family friendly accessible. And yeah. that would be really cool. True, true. That's a, actually a really good point. So yeah, exactly. Same, same concept. Yeah. But in a kind of, you know, group situation, <laughs> not exactly yes, like yes. writing something. Um, so yeah. Oh, see, I'm glad. Okay. I'm kind of happy that our lists are kind of covering opposite sides of the spectrum right now. Okay, cool. You're talking about all the movies that I also would have made my list. And so I'm happy that we're talking about these. <laughs> yay. That's good. No, it's good. Really good. Okay. Yay. All right. Well, what's your number four? My number four, okay, this this one I was kind of questioning placement on. It actually, no, I'm I'm happy with the placement of it. Uh, my number four is gonna be Wreck It Ralph. And Danielle, that is oh my god, we literally, I was gonna put that in my list. I was like Wreck It Ralph should be on there, but I didn't. I'm so, I you you and me, we're right here. See, we are right see, here. We're just talking about the opposite things that would like okay, but it's great. On the list should knock on list. We're covering it uh, all. We are. We are covering it all. And okay, so this one, Wreck It Ralph would have to go in Tomorrowland. 100%. Oh, 100%. Right. Oh, okay. Yes. I've always talked about having a Sugar Rush um, Speedway, like an actual Sugar Rush ride. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Because Autopia is so boring. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, but if we got like the different kind of colored cars, they had yes. like, candy accents on them. Like, let's go big on the theming. You have the option there. Let's make it cute. Uh, yes. Yes. So I'm thinking Wreck-It Ralph somewhere, either Autotopia or even if it was like a virtual simula simulator ride, something along the lines. There's so much dead space that we could utilize this for. In true Tomorrowland, we could put it somewhere mm -hmm. true absolutely and it could be you know the first one with more sugar rush or you can do um breaks the internet is still very futuristic could be very well themed to Tomorrowland in some sort of building um a show building so fully agree was totally going to make my list it just got cut out but um I love that and I'm so glad you put that on your list so yay oh, thank you oh <laughs> Great idea. And Disney, please, for the love of the mouse, put something else. Put theme Autopia. Please, 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 please. You know, I know if, that if it's in partnership want, with Honda. If you want to take any any of these ideas and like feel free to use them. We know we know so many different people from all over the Disney world listen to our podcast. If you like any of that, these ideas, you you don't necessarily have to claim us. You just have to invite us to the premiere of it. In like maybe a little shout out, maybe a little acknowledgement. That would be cool. That'd but, be nice. Inspired I mean, by. <laughs> we're just telling you what the people want. That's that's all we're saying. That's what we're saying. I'm just oh man, it's so tough. I I know with for Autopia especially, it's been um, taken over by like car companies and gas companies for a very long time. Like Chevron first did it, then then Honda took over, 
And so they would want probably a sponsor. But if anyone else is out there and it's a Disney fan, um, you have a theme right in your hands if you want to take it and roll with it and put some oh. money towards the ride. Chica's saying that Tokyo's getting it. Are they really? But it's going to take place after Buzz, so I think it's going to be a soothing thing. So, a shoot, a sh oh, 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 uh, with a pew pew. So it's going to replace their Astro Blaster. That's kind of cool. By if, oh, Brianna's saying that if it was sponsored by Mars Candy Company, that'd be even even more hilarious, right? As for like candy, I, mean, I know. Wouldn't be surprised. I know. Mars is Nestle. Is Nestle its own company? Nestle Nest versus uh, Mars. Are they competitors? Yes. I think they are. They are competitors. Yeah. Our current contract here in Disney World is Mars. Oh well, then oh never mind. Did Disney they and Mars? That makes the sense. Entire, um, I do a whole video about that in length on uh, YouTube, talking about all of the Mars candy sponsorship for the uh, confectionery here at Walt Disney World. So, yeah, good so does Mars sponsor Oogie Boogie Bash in terms of the candy? And usually, it's not so yes. scary. That's why okay. you'll get like the one p big piece of candy, and it's usually always M and M's. Got it. Yeah. We used yeah, to have that for, um, the mad, the magic key gift. Okay. Yep. Cool. 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 Fun facts. Sorry. A little tangent there. Think about candy. I guess I'm hungry. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> All right. So we're on number three. Yes. We are on number three. Okay. My number three, switching back to the princesses. Uh, my number three is Pocahontas and hmm. uh, similar to Mulan. Where is the Pocahontas attraction? You have one of the best soundtracks of all time. You have an amazing princess. You have the canoe. She rides in a canoe a lot of the time on mm -hmm. water. Uh, just something I am picturing a dark ride again or or like or a log ride, something like that. Or you retheme the canoes to make it Pocahontas. I something like that. I just want to see you know, more Pocahontas or, love. You know, I would even just be happy with taking something similar to like journey of water right yes uh, the uh, the moana walk through in epcot make mm -hmm. a pocahontas walk through talking about nature talking about america's with grandmother willow lines. can you imagine a grandmother willow like somewhere we used in the to park? have a grandmother willow here in animal kingdom did you know that i didn't know that where she we had a talking grandmother willow and she would talk like she was inside in the very center of Rafiki's Planet Watch. <gasps> oh, and that's why I missed it. All about the animals and everything like that. And she actually was like a little animatronic type moving Grandmother Willow. And she was amazing. Oh, and my god! we gosh. got rid of her. When? Because the, the first time I went to Rafiki's Planet Watch was 2014. So I oh, it would have definitely been missed it. That. We're talking then like I missed early it, yeah. 2000s. Then, yeah. Okay. I didn't, I didn't go when I was nine. So, oh, Hi. man. That's such a bummer. You know, and I, I was thinking about that too. Like we do have a meet and greet, like a singular sometimes meet and greet here at Walt Disney World. But she's, she roams around Frontierland uh, over here from oh, time so to time. We don't, we don't even have that. But mm. she's getting more love over in Tokyo Disney as part of their parade and has the audio as part of the parade than we have over here in the, in the States. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I forget the name of their parade that's going on currently, but it's the, the it's the, one with it's half Rapunzel, half Pocahontas, and it's it's gorgeous. Like the mix that they do for the songs, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'll have to send you a link later, Megan. I would love to see it. Yeah, because they she was a part of. I think she was part of our parade back in like the nineties or something. Shortly after the movie came out, um, and uh, I just I she's just one of my favorites, and I wish we got a little more love for Pocahontas in the parks. Yes, Chica said Harmony and Color Parade. Call me in color. Thank you, right Chica, now. in our chat. Yes. Okay. Got it. I'll have to look it up on uh, on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. It's so good. So good. All right. What about okay. you, Denya? What's your number three? My number three is kind of there because I'm bitter. Um, <laughs> and it is a Mary Poppins themed attraction. Oh, so good. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We were supposed to. We were supposed to have a Mary Poppins themed attraction. It was going to be a version of the spinning teacups, but instead you were inside the, it was from Mary Poppins returns the, the newer movie. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the little, uh, the little China bowls that they go into that they're dancing on the artwork for. Yes. Uh huh. You, yep. You went into the 2d world. You went through James, 
Michaels and everybody's not James and Michaels. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Jane and, Jane and Michael. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jane and Michael's rooms. And then you entered into the bowl and it was this 2d animation and it was supposed the to be in the UK world. pavilion of Epcot. Oh my gosh. How cool would that be? The UK pavilion does need an attraction. So yes. And what I think makes me more angry is that we saw a concept of this. One of the Imagineers, um, after it was officially scrapped, after it was officially canceled, this was announced. It was announced in the 2019, um, Z23, Z23. we were getting this. Mm -hmm. It got all the way through concepts and then it got cut because of post COVID and oh, these yeah. concepts still exist. They were released on the internet and they look amazing. I mean, yes, it's just a little spinny teacup ride, but Epcot needs something in that corner over there. Something else that's more family friendly, that is not just Ratatouille, but something over in the UK side. Oh, we we're so totally close agree. to so far. Yeah. And that, of course, we're talking about Epcot and how those sides of the World Showcase, you know, it, the, there's nothing going on besides Remy Jota Tree Adventure. That's it. We'd need more attractions over in those pavilions. So that would be the cutest little addition. A Mulan, I, a Mulan coaster in Mulan, China. A little spinny teacup ride back over in the, the UK. UK. Mm. You know, it's, it's all we're asking. But is there, we got <laughs> is that water too much to water ask? Water with Moana, and you get to play with some recycled water that you're not allowed to drink. Not that you should drink that. Anyway. Don't ingest that, please. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you do in the bed instead hey, of taking a spinny teacup ride. I'm it's not bitter. Cute. It's I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Moana's cute. I honestly, I, I did not remember because I went to D23 in 2019. I do not remember them talking about the Mary Poppins ride, but now that I know, that's um, because all of us Disney World people at the time were screaming and we were I'm so sure. excited and then it got ripped out of our hands. We're not bitter. <sighs> not bitter. COVID just did so much more damage than than we thought, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, bring it back, Disney, please, because that's a great idea. And we love Mary Poppins. Oh, yes. <sighs> all right. All right. So moving on to number two. Um, this one, for sure, I'm not bitter about. <laughs> Because it was supposed to be at Disneyland. It's Atlantis. Journey to Ooh, Atlantis. Okay, this one almost made my list too, but I kind of figured you were going to talk about it. So I I'm got happy you. you mentioned it, Megan. I got you because, yes, she was supposed to be the submarine theme for Disneyland. That was in talks. It was a whole concept. They drew up the art and everything. They even put a photo op right in front of the ride when it was closed for so many years, being like, hey, this is going to be an Atlantis ride. Look at the ride vehicle. Or like, this is. But take a picture with it. I have a picture is somewhere in in digital or cyberspace some, somewhere, y'all. I have a picture with it. Um, it's on a hard drive in mom's drawer. From two thousand, <laughs> it is. It is in a photo album somewhere, year two thousand. Um, and yes, uh, we were supposed to get an Atlantis ride where you. Uh, I, the the rumor is that you were supposed to like you're supposed to like leave the vehicle or something, or like you would go to Atlantis and like I, I don't know. I don't. I forget what it was, but. Um, it seemed really, really cool. And I just, I get that it was not a box office hit. It wasn't the hit they were thinking it was going to be. So they ended up scrapping it, didn't make a lot of money off it. Um, but as we know, we very much appreciate Atlantis to this day. And I just wish that it would also get a little more love because we don't, we don't have anything during to Atlantis, except for it was obviously in uh, Wondrous Journeys because it is a Disney animated film, so they had to feature it. Um, but but even uh, if it's got like a slow boat moving ride, something that like that. Cool, right? Yeah, just because I think it's I love the movie, still love it. So I think it'd be really cool to have the storyline and go through it somewhere somehow. Um, so yeah, dark ride for sure. I believe I don't think you could actually do like a. Um, you know, Splash Mountain, well, Tiana's by Adventure. It would have thing. to be a dark ride, or you could probably do a Splash Mountain type thing. But mm -hmm. if it was a dark ride, then you can get the glowy effects and like it turns on at a certain right. point and then everything glows. But That'd be so cool. I just like thinking about it, it makes me, mm -hmm. it makes me not angry, but like I just want to see it. Like I would go on the submarine so much more often if it was Atlantis themed. Like so, I, oh my gosh, seeing it underwater, because you could do that underwater. They, I mean, they, you can make it glow, you got the lights, you have the lagoon, and then you have the showroom. You have everything underneath the Autopia. So um, 
I'd, yeah, I would just, I, I just really wish that was what they went with, but I understand. I get it. Money's a factor. I can't understand. Not bitter at all. Not bitter. Not bitter. <laughs> Any who's. Well, moving on to my number two. I'm okay. This one I was really debating on, but I think a lot of people are going to agree with me. I want a DuckTales themed attraction. Love that. DuckTales. And Ooh. I have a specific dream in mind, right? So here, here's my blue co sky concept. Disney, feel free to use this after I give this to you. Is that I want to something similar to how Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway operates, right? Mm -hmm. We're going through each of the scenes. It's very chaotic, but instead you're following the DuckTales crew, Huey, Dewey, Louie, Scrooge, and you're chasing after Glomgold and like maybe he's stolen something. But this all takes place over in the animation courtyard of Hollywood Studios, where mm -hmm. that carcass mm -hmm. of um, Star Wars Launch Bay is, which used mm -hmm. to be the old animation studio here in Hollywood Studios. Yep. Put it in that where there's all this space and turn animation courtyard back into an animation courtyard with DuckTales, an animated cartoon attraction. Love that. Yep. Yep. Disney. I can totally see it. You even have the location and the vision for it, Danielle. I am impressed. I do. Yeah. We're going to reopen up Little Mermaid over there. So then you have your show, <laughs> you have your kids, and then you have your like in-between ages. It's still a family attraction, but it's very appealing to adults also. I'm, that, I'm bringing the balance. That's all that I'm doing. That sounds and great. We have more of the UK fam freaking loves Donald. So put it in the park that caters the most to the Europeans. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Yes. Fully agree. Um, would love to see that as well. I am not the biggest DuckTales person. I watch it sometimes on Disney Channel. Um, I haven't seen the new ones, so, but I fully agree. And I think there's a really big fan base for it. So I'm, I support this. Yes. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What about our you. number one though, Megan? <laughs> number one, I think will come as a surprise to absolutely no one. <laughs> it's going to be for me. Oh, first of all, thank you guys so much for listening to, to this episode, to our podcast. We appreciate you being here. Of course, we are going to do a bonus episode for these countdowns. So if you want to listen to that, you can either join the Patreon, which is in our episode notes, or you can become a paid subscriber and you can listen to our bonus list because we also do that for every countdown and for this one it's going to be um uh part of the separate list as well so um but thank you all so much for listening my number one is going to be emperor's new groove Ta -da! i even wore the shirt oh, for it today, sweater today. i love yeah, yeah, it yeah 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 had to had to um not only is she my favorite disney animated film but i would love to see as an attraction a lot of people are like oh yeah it should have been splash mountain you should have done the log ride. no excuse you it's a roller coaster okay we have it all planned out it's right it's in the film it's right there it's a fun little roller coaster similar to crush's coaster in disneyland paris mm -hmm. um and it slows down at certain points so you can see some animatronics. So you see a little like mini scene happening and then you go again and go really fast on the roller coaster. So it can take you through like a little, you know, we could, we could, we could, pa but you know, pass the, the film itself and go into a sequel similar to Tiana's Bayou Adventure, or we can do the film. We can go through the storyline itself for the film, but it is a roller coaster for Emperor's New Group. All right. A hundred percent. Either mm -hmm. you do the whole, you're running from Yzma and Kronk and you're exactly. following along and you're going through the mountains. Going through her lair. Um, yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah. Yep. And or Cuscotopia. You, you are recreating the pull the lever Kronk scene. It's literally a roller coaster. It's literally laid it's out. It's right for there you. in front of you. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. So um, that would be my concept for Emperor's New Groove. Uh, please and thank you, Disney, if you care to bring it back for us millennials who love that film so much. <laughs> uh, you know, that that would be cool. That would be really cool. Thank you. Well, All right. I, number one for Danielle. That was one of the ones that almost made my list. Almost made my list. That was like bumped down a little bit. But mm -hmm. the one that is sitting at number one for me, and I think a lot of other people would, will agree with me, is Lilo and Stitch. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. With capital Y. I don't, 
I don't know if you make this another like literal Hawaiian roller coaster or something along the sort. I would also like Hawaiian to see roller this. coaster ride. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Something or even I wouldn't be mad about something along the lines of like Ratatouille Adventure, but instead you're going through the scenes of <gasps> Hawaii and you're right? in little red spaceships. How cute would that be? Oh, that would be so cute. They're little also. red. So right. <laughs> And then like you, you go, you're trying, you're running away from, maybe you're running away from Gant too, right? Gant too. Uh-huh. And yeah. so it's taking place all in the first movie, just a little bit slightly different at the timeline. And then you're mm-hmm. going into each of the scenes, like it starts out really calm and then you shoot off into space and like there's your running away in space kind of scene. You mm-hmm. land back in Hawaii and it would be so cool. Or, or you can make it like a, a little capture game, you know, similar to Buzz Light, your Astro Blasters, or I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring it up, Men in Black over in Universal Studios. You bring all the aliens into it. All the oh experiments gosh, all the are cousins. there and you go capture them. Yes. Kind of like the show. It's That's so easy. It's right there. <laughs> right? It's in front of you. It's right, it's right in front there of you. 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 missed it. <laughs> you missed it. What's that audio from? Oh, wait. It's from Mulan. Um, it is from Mulan. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you missed. He was, he was right in front of you. you. <laughs> it's literally most of these concepts, y'all. And like specifically the Lilo and Stitch one, the Emperor's New Groove one. It's written out for you. It's, it's there. It's ready you put, for the You put it in the movie. You did not do it put it in real life. <laughs> uh, we're so passionate about this, as you can tell, as I'm sure many people are. I think there's a lot of people out there who are, you know, just vying for these movies to be rides because they're, they're just near and dear to our hearts and we would love to see them come to life. So um, Lilo and Stitch was a fantastic choice for number one. Danielle, I'm honestly kind of proud of us. We didn't even communicate before this, but we've captured so much in both of our lists. And I think that's what's really fun about the having just the five because we can give and take from others. We can, we can have some crossover or we can do what we did today and cover everything because we had different mm-hmm. ideas. So um, very much enjoyed these lists. And if you guys, of course, if you agree with us, if you want to add something, you can leave us a review on Apple, rate us on Spotify and DM us your review on Instagram. You can also, we do have an email, DisneyCountdownShow at gmail.com and you could message that and let us know your Mm -hmm. thoughts. But um, thank you all again so much for listening. Uh, Danielle, this was a ton of fun and it's it's 8 a.m. I'm just getting the day started. So this is great for me. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yes, I agree. This was a really fun list. I'm happy that we covered all this. And again, if, or even on the Discord fam, write out your list. Let us know if you agree, if you disagree, like Megan yeah. was saying. Um, Did we miss something? And, Let us know. I, and again, I, I said it just a few moments ago, but again, we know that some people in the Disney world listen to us. Feel free to use any of that, these ideas. Again, we are just saying what the people want from the front lines of the Disney content creators. That's that's all we're saying. So That's right. That's right. We are just a couple of spokespeople for for a few people that love Disney and within the Disney community. So. Yeah, even though, like, hashtag not sponsored, hashtag not directly affiliated, but take everything it's that free reign. with a grain of salt. Because, yep. I, I mean, like, some people, they're... They agree. They 100% agree with us. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Take it. Take what you will. (laughs) But yes, good episode, Megan. Good episode. It really, it was a good time. And again, thank you all so much for listening. We are so excited to uh, be recording another episode for next week. We'll keep that countdown just a little bit secret. So we'll tell you, we'll tell you when it, uh, when it airs. (laughs) Until next time, have a very magical day. And night, night, sleep tight, dream of churros tonight. Yay. Now I want to listen to the Lilo and Stitch soundtrack now. Ah, oh, so good. Mm. Such a good one. Such, such a Elvis. Maybe I'll listen to that on the way in. Do to it. Park today. I, I think that'll put that. you in a real good mood. It will. <laughs> Hawaiian roller coaster ride, baby. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it's in the song, man. Not only in the movie, but the song. <laughs> have your name at the end of our new episodes and to receive a bunch of magical perks please check out our patreon via the link in the episode notes or visit patreon.com slash disney countdown show we'll see you there